family somebody give jesus a hand clap of praise today come on let's give god some praise in his house if you're at home clap at home that's all right come on you can clap at your house <laughs> it's good to see you all out here today amen we we uh we're gonna get started and, and uh, go to the lord in prayer in just a second if you're here we're so glad that you're here joining us and those are uh, maybe coming in a little bit later or if you're watching online we're so happy you're joining us online Amen. On uh, on this on this very day today, I believe that God is. Um, every I say it every time, you know, but I, I just believe that when we come into the house of God, that God really wants to do something in our lives. Amen. I believe that God has a plan. I believe that God has an assignment for us, and I believe that the Lord wants to do something unique in our individual lives whenever we come into His house and give Him praise. And so, I want us to always have that mindset. And if you're at home at your house and watching online, then you can still expect the same thing and just know that we love you, we miss you, and can't wait till you get back to church, and um, and that you're still the part of the family of God, even though you're watching online. Amen. And we love everybody. 
So um, I want you to just stand with me. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, invite the Holy Spirit in this place today. And I believe that God wants to just do something in your life. Anybody believe with me that God wants to do something in your life today? Amen. God wants to do something for you. And I I just want to call out a blessing and uh, just call out for the heavens to move in this place today. Amen. Let's pray. Would you pray along with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you today. Lord, we are so grateful for another privilege and opportunity to be in the house of God. Lord, right here in this place, you know right where we are, not just physically, but God, where our heart is today. You know where we are in life. You know where we are spiritually, God. You know where we are in our strugglings and in our sufferings. God, I pray today that you would just begin to move and meet us truly right where we are. God, I pray that you would just move in every heart that may be discouraged. God, that you'd move in every person that's feeling anxious or some uh, sort of depression, maybe battling an addiction of some kind. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just begin to convict and touch hearts that may be away from you or in, in things that they shouldn't be in. Lord, that you would just begin to move upon them, God, to bring them back to the throne of grace. Lord, I thank you that grace is new every morning. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is here today, already in this house. God, we don't have to wait for you to get here. We don't waiting for you to show up. But Lord, you are already in this place, ready to move and meet on every need. And God, I'm so grateful and thankful today that you are at Compassion Church and you are ready to move in lives and to meet needs. God, we love you and we're here to worship the name that is above every name. God, to lift up the name of Jesus. We're so grateful, God, for everything that you've done, Lord, for the sins that you have erased in our life, the shame that we once carried, God, is no longer there. God, the chains that were once uh, binding our lives, Lord, I'm so grateful that we are free in Jesus. God, we love you today. Inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory, and ask this in Jesus' name. Somebody help me say amen, and let's worship Jesus today.
There is a 
They know that they love who is on pills. And I come to declare today that there is power in the name of Jesus to break every single chain. If you would just declare with me today. Come on, one more time. Sing it like you mean it. Come on, sing it today. Break every chain. 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 Hallelujah. 
And we're talking about hearing into the spirit realm today and hearing some chains falling. And I'm just telling you right now, I don't know if you can feel it, but I feel something in this world that is beginning to shift. We have been in a place, my God, and I don't even know how to say this without running across this room. We have been in a place of such darkness and depression, a season in this, in this, not only in this nation, but in our entire world. It has caused a record suicide rate and depression to go through the roof. And if you have not realized by now that these are enemy attacks that are on the nation, amen, the Christian, supposedly Christian nation upon the churches, amen, think about it, family. They are opening bars and telling churches they need to keep closed. They are telling us that we can gather and protest and riot and loot and burn buildings down and destroy police cars, but they're telling you that you can't sing in church because you might infect somebody. We need to open up our eyes and realize this is so much deeper than what they are telling you. And if the children of God would stand in the nation today, amen, every denomination, every nation, every tribe and tongue, every skin color, and declare the name of Jesus and the blood that is applied, we would see every single chain broken off of the United States of America. Who will declare with me today, this nation still belongs to Jesus and we will not back down today hallelujah we won't quit amen in fact I believe the Holy Ghost is just getting started he's about to move and do something in this season like we have never seen before all I have to say to the church is y'all better get ready to see a move of God if you believe that put your hands together one more time give God some praise we're about to see a move of God we're about to see God do something he's never done before amen I believe it with all my heart because when, when, when the nation is in turmoil and the church is in her closet praying and we are seeking after the Lord in the name of Jesus, that truly breaks chains and that truly sees salvation by the multitudes. I don't know if you've seen it or not because the mainstream media don't want to show it to you. They don't like you to see the good stuff. Amen. All right, I won't make you mad this morning. Uh, but they don't like you to see the good things. They don't like you to see that uh, today I saw an article that in Kenosha where they were having the worst outbreaks of riots and all of these other things. There are churches having revival. There are people getting baptized in the streets, in the great big containers. There are people who are getting saved by the multitudes out there. And where the devil is trying to stir up some junk, the Holy Ghost is bringing revival. Amen. The media don't have to tell you about it, but I will. There's a revival going on right now in the nation, even though they're not putting it on the news. And I'm declaring that Jesus is just getting started. Amen. If you believe that, holler to your neighbors say, he's just getting started. He's just getting started. Come on. He's not even through. He's just beginning to move. Amen. You can be seated for just a moment. If I can get, uh, let me get Dustin and Carter to grab a plate if you guys can. Amen. If you guys don't mind, we're going to, we're going to worship God with our tithes and offering this morning. Just ask God to bless all the gifts. And if you're watching online again, I want to say to you every week, we appreciate you and your faithfulness and giving and mailing in tithes or doing it on the app or online. We're grateful to God and thankful to you for doing that. And uh, we just uh, are, are so grateful that the kingdom of God is still being advanced even through this time. Amen. Through the time of shutdown. And even though we're seeing so many people of our church family that are still staying at home, we're believing that very soon we'll get to see you come back. And that we will get to all be together again and worship God. Amen. So let's keep praying for that. But right now, let's worship God with these gifts. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you today. And God, we bless the name of Jesus. Right in the midst of this atmosphere of worship. Right in the midst of us lifting up the name of Jesus and glorifying God. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless every person who's worshiping you with their gifts today. God, whether it be much or it be little, I thank you that they're faithful to you. And I'm grateful to God today that you are moving in their lives, that you are blessing them. God, that you are um, touching their lives, even financially or in their health, whatever that may be today. And while we understand that we are not buying a miracle because you are not for sale, we are sowing into good ground. We are sowing into the kingdom of God. And we love you today. And we bless your name, Jesus, and ask it right now. Come on, somebody help me say amen. Amen. God bless you as you're giving today. I appreciate, again, your faithfulness. I just want to remind you of just a couple of things. Next Sunday, being the first Sunday in September, uh, starts off our Immerse course. We do this, as you know, uh, the first and Sunday of every month, Immerse course, step one and step two. So step one is 9 a.m. next Sunday, and uh, if you want to sign up, we will have child care for you. The sign-up sheet is now on the Welcome Center in the front. 
And so if you want to serve somewhere in the church, if you want to uh, join a reach team, if you want to uh, even join the church, you don't have to join when you go through this course, but if you want to, this is certainly your next step. We just tell you all about the church, our mission and vision, what we believe, and we uh, provide some coffee and breakfast snacks. We just do it right here in the back in the kitchen. And um, if you want to come and be a part of that and have not done it, I encourage you to do that. Um, you can sign up in the front, but we need you to sign up uh, so that we know you're coming. Uh, otherwise, uh, nobody will be here if nobody signs up. Amen. Well, we'll be here, but we won't be back there. So <laughs> make sure you sign up if you want to come. Uh, I also want to explain this to you because I've been meaning to for weeks to kind of give you a heads up. Uh, as most of our regulars know, we do our C groups uh, every spring and fall. And so the fall normally starts in September. You obviously haven't heard anything about that or signups or anything like that. And as for a reason, we still have so many that are, as you can see, we still have so many that are at home right now that um, still have not come back yet, including some of our secret leaders who lead some of those groups. And so the, the reason we're not uh, doing that this semester is just for that reason. So we are praying and believing, and I hope you all will help me pray and believe too, that maybe when we get back in January, uh, for our following spring semester, our next semester in January, we're really, really hoping and praying that we will be able to um, have our C groups to start back up then and, and get that launch of very exciting stuff. And if you want to start a C group, then it's a good time to get your thoughts together on that. It's just our small groups here. We call them C groups. And uh, hopefully between now and January, we'll get to do that. So I just wanted to give you an update so that you're not in the dark or having questions. But um, we have just decided where we have so many people who are unable to to do that, um, you know, we, we just had better wait. This is not a real good time, amen. So stay tuned though, we are working on some stuff. Uh, hopefully some types of events or some types of outreaches, it may not be the exact same things that we normally get to do, but I'm still going to get with our leadership team and talk to them about some things that I'm hoping we get to do in the not too distant future and um, be really exciting. So stay tuned for that, amen. Holler at somebody close to you and tell them good morning, how glad you are to see them. Amen. You might have to twist or turn in some direction, but tell somebody good morning anyway. Uh, so it's good to see you today. All right. At this time, uh, if we have any of our kids that want to go to class, I mean, we'll still have that available in nursery so we can let you go. I know a lot of our kids, again, are still at home. And a constant reminder to that, parents, with all your kids that are at home, if you want any of our lessons, uh, please just let us know. And we can certainly send you the lessons and um, make sure that you have all that ready for your kids. Amen. Because we want to make sure that they... Uh, are caught up with all of that, and uh, and so we will certainly try to keep you in the loop. Amen. So uh, while we're moving into that, I'm going to jump into the Word here in just a minute. Um, I want to give you a warning here. It's a little bit early right now, so I think I'll be okay, but I'm going to try to, uh, I'm not going to rest the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to try my best to move on because uh, I have a graveside to do as soon as I leave, so <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm gonna, I can't be long-winded today. Somebody just rub your forehead and be like, man, thank goodness, amen. We'll get to Shoney's on time. You'll beat, you'll beat the Baptist folk to old Charlie's. It'll be good, amen. <laughs> so I just uh, wanted to let you know that, so if I have to slip out, uh, when, as soon as I get through, I don't know how long I'll get, depends on how long the Lord has for us today, but uh, it depends on how, how long we're here, if I may have to run out, and I don't know how many hands I'll get to, well, we're not shaking hands, so I don't know how many uh, goodbyes I'll get to say, I'll say that. So I just wanted to let you know about that, and on that note, please continue to play, pray for the Carter family. This is Joe and Teresa, who've been at home still for a few weeks. There's some of, of, of our family who haven't been coming, but Joe and Teresa's um, uh, the little grandkids that normally come, all the Carter kids, it was their father who passed away. And uh, it's just such a shame. Um, I, he was in his late 30s, very, very young. And um, he uh, had heart problems, had his first heart attack when he was in his early 20s. And he had a heart attack on Thursday night, I believe it was, Wednesday night, Thursday night, and, um, and did not make it. So I preached the funeral yesterday, have the graveside today um, as soon as we get finished. So please, please, please be praying for them. And uh, hopefully Joe and Teresa and all the kids will get to come back soon. They wanted to be here today, but um, obviously just weren't able to make it back. So please be praying for them. And um, if you have their uh, a number for them, maybe just uh, call them, send them a message, and just tell them you're thinking about them. I know they would appreciate it because this was very, very unexpected. And how many know the Holy Spirit will carry you and comfort you in times like this? Amen. I'm so grateful. Every funeral I believe that I've ever preached, I start off by reminding them that the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, one of his names is the comforter because comforting is what he does best. Amen. 
and I'm grateful for the comforter. All right, I'm going to get started today. We're going to do something a little bit different. Y'all want to have a little bit of fun before we jump into the message. Is this okay? Amen. Anybody on a time schedule? Amen. Well, I am, but I'm going I'm to get you out of here on time. So we're going to start off with a little bit of fun. I have a helper. Carter, why don't you come and help me, brother? I'm going to come and move this out the way. We're going to, for y'all online, we're going to scoot you in so you can see what's happening. Uh, I thought we'd play just this little game that has everything to do with the sermon. Amen. And we're going to have some fun today and uh, have a good time. Is that all right? Y'all like to have fun? How many know Christians can have fun? It's all right. You can have fun and have a good time in Jesus, and we're going to do that today. And uh, we're going to have just a little bit of fun, so he's going to help me get set up here. How many know he got his healing in his left arm, and we're putting him to work? Praise the Lord. He can carry stuff, and we're going to put him to work. You can just put it right in the middle, my friend. That's good right there. You can just grab me that bowl if you don't care. I'm liable to pull out my whole shirt, and that won't be pretty. Thank you, my friend. All right, so I've already talked to a helper this morning. Elliot's going to come up here. Give Elliot a big hand. He's always my guinea pig. Woo! Elliot's going to come up here and help us out today. I've given Elliot a challenge. And so what he's going to do, I'm going to take this, first of all, tie this around your head without cheating. You might have to put the bigger end right there around your eyeballs and start this way. You know what I'm saying? Start you right there and then tie. There you go. And so we're going to make sure you can't see because you know the Bible says if you cheat, then you might go to hell. So you can't cheat, okay? Make sure you can't see. That's in the book of Jericho. Y'all get that in a minute. <laughs> Somebody's like, Jericho, is that Old or New Testament? Amen. You'll get that in just a minute or maybe on your way home. Amen. Everything that you want to say that is in the Bible that's not really there, just tell them it's in the book of Jericho. It sounds very legit. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. <laughs> here's what we're going to do. I have, I have uh, gotten some of these cotton balls. Honey, if you're watching online today, I will buy you some more cotton balls. These are my wife's. And so these cotton balls right here, Elliot has got a challenge. I'm going to put... Okay, step right. Can you see anything? Can you see out the bottom of them? No. You better not lie. Okay, step right here. Step right here. There's the table. Here, get your spoon in your hand. All right, now the, the cotton balls start right over here. And what he's got to do is try to get as many of these cotton balls in this bowl as he can in 60 seconds. That's the end of the table. If you knock some off, we'll get them. It's okay. I've already knocked one of them off. Let me go to my timer, and we're going to start this off. Okay? And so while he's doing this, we're going to cheer him on and make sure that he knows that he knows that we're really we're really rooting for him to win. How many believe he can get them all in there? Woo! Amen. They they got faith in you, brother. You should have seen those those faces. All right, you ready? The clock starts in three, two, one, go. Go. Woo! He's got he's got four. He's got six. He's got eight. Amen. Oh man, he's doing good. He's killing it. He's killing it. He's killing it. right there. Up a little bit. Up, up in the front. Up a little bit. Up right there. Right there. You're killing it. He's got it, but he's killing it. Right there. Oh, man, that was like 30 in one scoop right there. Woo, look at that. Look at that. Man, that was great right there. Go to the front just a little bit more. A little bit more in the front. A little bit more in the front. A little bit more right there. Come up. Now, you got him. What? Are you looking? Are you cheating? (laughs) Okay, stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop. Okay, all right. He didn't get any. Amen. I'm just teasing. Give him a big hand. You did so good, brother. I had to aggravate him. <laughs> you did good. Amen. All right, Carter, come help me clean up my mess, my friend. Amen. He did so good. I appreciate you for helping me out today. Give him one more big hand. We always use Elliot for, as a guinea pig around here. I was hoping I could sneak all of them out before he even knew what was going on. Amen. There's a timer going off. Amen. Your time's up. I was hoping I could get them all out. Amen. Can I tell you why they're cleaning this up? You know what this occurred to me the other day, though, really, when I begin to think about this, is because whenever we go through things in life, we, it seems like everything's a challenge, isn't it? It seems like everything that you do when you're trying to get through, uh, first of all, through high school, we had some that just graduated to all of our graduates and seniors. Whoop, whoop, we love you, and we're so proud of you. And some of them have already started college. Amen. Some of them are already going to college and trying to get their degree. And while we do that, though, it seems like everything that we do in life is a challenge. We go from one challenge to the next. And, and how many have ever been in the boat with me to where it seems like that you're doing so good, man, and you're just like going through life kind of how like I was just joking with him, and, and you're like, man, I'm killing it. Things are just going good. And then all of a sudden, your eyes are really open to what's happening around you, and you're not killing it, and things are not really going like you thought they would be. Is that anybody in here, or is it just me? I mean, I was, I was really thinking to myself, man, I, I think I've finally got some things together in my life. I think I'm doing good. And then all of a sudden, it just seems like that I'm not at all 
all doing like I thought I was. And the, and the word really for that is that we're not really doing any progress. Amen. We just work, work, work all the time. And we step back. And watch this. And we analyze the situation. We analyze our life, and then it seems just like nothing really happened from that. Like we're just blindly going through life. We're just hoping that we can make it through things, and there's just no progress. Can everybody just say that word with me right now? Just say the word progress with me. Just say progress. Amen. Thank you, Michelle. Everything in life is a process, and everything that we're trying to do is making progress. Progress, if you want to define that, is simply a, a uh, forward uh, movement in anything, whether it's in life or whether it's in time or distance, it's just moving forward. It's just going, that, that's progress. It's just getting somewhere, amen? It's just trying to accomplish something. And so progress being a movement forward, uh, here's an example for you. A lot of you guys know that, uh, who've been here a little bit, a short amount of time, I started a weight loss journey uh, nearly a couple years ago, and so uh, to God be the glory, I've lost about 60 pounds or so, so far, uh, although I've gained some of that back, you know, and fallen off the wagon, you know how that does. The devil just, you know, pulls one over and you get, you turn into Taco Bell and you didn't even mean to. Next thing you know, you've got all kinds of food and it's it happens amen i blame it on the devil we might as well we can blame everything else on him amen is that cool okay <laughs> and so it, it just happens where you know i fell off the wagon for a while but now i'm trying to jump back on it so i've been back on uh, on it for about two or three weeks trying to lose my weight again but but uh everything that i was doing is all the process you ever met those people it was once me before i found the right diet that would work for me is I, I went through uh diets to where i would like be doing so good and then uh, i saw somebody share something the other day it was hilarious they said you know me sitting there patting my belly trying to see if that salad i ate last week has worked its magic yet you know that's just kind of how we feel, just this quick, we, we just want like this real, real fast results. And when you first go on a diet, you're just like, you know, eating so healthy and all of a sudden it's going fine for like maybe a week or two, depending on who you are. But then after a week or two, you're like, man, I still look the same and I'm like starving myself or I'm not eating what I want to eat. And so it's this process that feels like you're not making any progress. But over time, and I just kept doing it, and I kept making myself do it, I started noticing the results, and I started noticing the clothes fitting looser. And then all of a sudden, I had to go down clothes sizes and was just, you know, so floored at all that, all the process, uh, you know, progress, rather, that I had made in this journey. But my process made me the progress. How many know you can't skip the process? Let me hear you. Amen. You can't skip the process. You have to go through the process. You know, I was talking a minute ago. Have I slacked? You better believe it. I have cheated many times and many months. And I was talking about Taco Bell the other day. For those of y'all who know me, I love Taco Bell. And, and I had just dropped my wife off. I think it was Thursday evening. And I know more than had made it a mile down the airport. Now, Cohen done whipped it in Taco Bell and had a cheat meal. And I was just like, to God be the glory. You know, and... <laughs> And the thing is, though, is that we have to, we have to, you know, get back on whenever we fall back off. How many has ever fallen off in your walk with God? How many, I mean, can we be real? How many has ever made mistakes? We all have. Every hand should be up, really, because we've all made mistakes. The thing is, is not that God is just trying to shun you, get mad at you, or kick you while you're down. It's that when you fall down, grace says that though you fall down, you can get back up again. Amen. Grace says you can fall down 1,000 times and yet you can stand up 1,001. That's what grace is, that God would allow you to get back up. And that not only can you get back up, but you can dust the mess off that you fell into and you can still see progress in your life. You can still see a forward movement. But what about when progress isn't progressing? What about when you are trying to move forward in this process and there's no progress and you're just not progressing forward amen whenever you just put yourself out there and still the relationship hasn't worked out like you wanted to whenever you were working so hard you were never late never got rode up one time and you still get laid off. Whenever you are just doing, when you're praying and studying and you're trying so hard to stay close to God and you get nailed with something Monday morning after a great service at church and you didn't sit coming and all of a sudden you're like, why God did that just happen to me? I've been trying to do good. I've been going through the process. What about when there is no progress in that situation? I found out in my own life that sometimes whenever I am four-wheeling through the lake bottoms of life that our tires get stuck and we start spinning. Come on, family. If we're being real, we go through life and we are trying so hard and then all of a sudden we just come to a complete stop and our wheels are spinning. There's no progress being made and we don't know why. And we get upset. There are times what I mean by that is when you get blindsided. I know y'all may have never been blindsided, but I have been blindsided 
blindsided. I have been, you know, uh, unexpected things have happened. Unplanned things happen in our lives that we did not plan on happening. Unforeseen things, and it caused us to see no, pro- no progress in our lives. And so it can just be a horrible feeling. It can make you feel distant. It can make you feel alone. It can make you even seem like a failure because there's no progress. Because we're trying to define progress on our own scale. Paul said it best when he says this in our scriptures. I'm going to jump on ahead and say what he said. But Paul said, I press on. Paul said, I press through some things. Life may bring me some things, but I'm going to press through it anyway. Amen. With time, I'm going to make some progress, whether I'm spinning my wheels right now. I know that I put, if I put my faith in Jesus, that I will soon get out of the rut that I'm in right now. Here's what I want to tell you today. If you're taking notes, write this down. Don't let your process stop all of your progress. Keep pressing on. Amen. Don't let your process stop your progress. you got to keep going because life is a process. Amen. Holler at three people and tell them, keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Keep pressing on. Here's what your Bible said in Philippians chapter 3 when you're there. It's in uh, 3 and then starting with verses 7. I'm going through 16 to give you the context of this whole thing. Amen. Philippians 3 and 7. Paul speaking again in very, very powerful scriptures, one or two in here that are just absolute golden nuggets of uh, wisdom and power, and so many people quote these, but man, we cannot miss their true meaning, especially not today. Amen. Verse 7, when you're there, just say, got it? All right, if you do not got it, we got it on the screen for you. Amen. But what things were gained to me, Paul says this, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss. For the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And count them as rubbish or just straight up garbage. Amen. Mike would appreciate that term. He's he's from England and he says rubbish. But y'all around here, we say the garbage. Amen. Paul said they are straight up trash that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on, that I may lay hold of that which, or excuse me, for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Verse 13, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. Somebody say forward. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press on through some dangers. I press on through some difficulties. I press on through some emotional, uh, low emotional states in my life. I press on through some migraine headaches. I press on through the cancer treatments. I press on, amen, toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if anything in you otherwise, thinks otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. I love how he's like, if y'all don't know this now, God's just going to reveal it to you and straighten you out later. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. Father, we love you today. God, we bless the name of Jesus. I thank you for our time here together. I praise you, Lord, for those that are even able to gather online. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would minister today, God, in such a way that would reveal the powerful truth in the Word of God, that would reveal righteousness in Christ Jesus, that would also show someone what it means to press on through some things, God, to attain victory and to know that progress can always be found in the process. Lord, we love you and we praise you and ask these things in Jesus' name. All the church said, amen, a woman, all of them. Amen. Watch this. If life that we go through truly is a process, and how many know it really is? Because even when Paul is saying this here, he says, I haven't arrived. I'm not just there. I haven't just gotten all the way there. I I haven't just arrived in that place, yet I am still going in that direction. Why do we always then, if, if it's a process, why do we always make things an end result? Why are our goals always an end result? Everything we do in life, when we're kids, we're, we're trying to go through school, man, and our goal is what? 
we got to get to 12th grade. I got to graduate. You know, I got to get my, my education. I got to get my diploma. Amen. I got to be schooled and learned. And I got to, you know, then leave school. And I got to go to uh, college. And when I go to college, hopefully I will find a relationship. And then when I find a relationship, start, you know, getting serious with a guy or a girl, then we hopefully will get married. And then we got to buy a house. And my goal is to get a nice house. And then we've got to, you know, get a good car and drop the college car that's falling apart, you know, and that smokes every time I start it. Amen. I got to get a good car. And then we got to have, oh gosh, we got to have kids. You know, you got to have, I got to, I got to have children. You know, that's the thing we do in life is we got to have kids. And then we got to, you know, get the perfect dog that's, you know, that's going to be like old yeller. It's just going to be, you know, a great dog. We got to make sure that the dog is right. And then, and then, oh man, we get older in life and we like, is my retirement good enough? You know, I got to think about my 401k. I got, am I going to have anything one day when I get to retire? And then we just make all of these goals. And as an end result, when life is really a process. Amen. Life is really a process of getting uh, through things. And so we like to rush the process and, uh, and try to make more progress because we think that progress is the end result. We think that it is just the end of one thing. But what if I told you that progress really is, is found in the process? And if you feel stuck, then you're still doing it right. I'll let your neighbor and say, you're doing it right. You say, Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? How can I be doing this thing right if I'm stuck or feeling stuck? Because I promise you at some point in your life, you are going to feel stuck. At some point when you are serving God, you are always going to feel like that something you're doing is, is not good enough or not getting you there in that direction. How do I know that? Because you are always going to have a, an enemy. It is a common enemy who is always trying to make sure that you feel like you are lesser than what you really are. And you are sometimes going to be stuck in a season to where uh, it, it could have been brought by your enemy or maybe God is holding you somewhere while he finishes what he is working on that is so much better than where you are right now. Amen. How many of you are thankful that God is a God working behind the scenes, even when you have not seen it yet, that he's still working things out for your good? And here is what is important. Even though we all feel stuck sometimes, you feel stuck, I do too. Here's what's important is that we know how to handle ourselves. Amen. We got to know what to do in that situation and how to handle that. Because when you're reading about Paul, understand, Paul was the Mac Daddy back in the day. He had all the credentials. He knew he was circumcised in the right way, which was very important in this culture. He had done all of the right things according to his peers around him. He had, he had this position and this background and he had this authority and all of these things. But he still said, I give up all of those things for what really matters. Amen. I give up everything else for what truly matters. Amen. Can I tell you that it has been said many times that he who dies with the most toys win. But can I tell you the Bible tells us a very different truth that he who dies without, you know, the Bible says that though you gain the whole world, you will lose your soul. So the, the thing that we have to learn in life is that he who dies with the most toys and without Jesus still goes to a devil's hell. Come on, somebody, if we're preaching the truth of the gospel today. I'm sick of all of us, though, measuring our our lives and measuring our progress on what the world says is forward thinking. Amen. I'm so sick of us trying to say everything, you know, because everything out there, make no mistake, all you've got to do is turn on your TV or go to a social media account. Everything on there that tells you is success is how many sexual partners somebody has or how much money that you have or if you've got the biggest and the nicest house or if people know you, if you've got fame and if somebody knows you, that's progress and that's what everybody out there will try to tell you and and I would, I would love to hear what people try to say when they measure their own self by those kinds of standards. Come on, Christians and believers and children of God. Paul is saying there ain't nothing out there but junk, baby. There is nothing out there that is worth spending my tires on, and it has no value on my eternal soul. I came to remind somebody today, you need to reevaluate your goals because this is a process in your life, and God is trying to grow you. And just because you feel like you are not making the progress that is according to somebody else's standards does not mean that you are not growing in Christ Jesus. Amen. Through all of your pain, God can still bless you. Through all of your sufferings, God can still bring you deliverance. And through the darkness, God can still show you revelation like you've never seen before. Amen. Because I believe that God is still parting red seas. And God is still walking into the fiery furnace. And he's still crumbling walls around Jericho. And he's still shutting the mouths of lions. And there is not one single devil in hell that God is afraid of and cannot square up with Jesus and win.
Not one single one. So why do we do that then in life? We celebrate the wrong things. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to help me today. That's all right. I'm going to help you out and give you the truth right here. We, we celebrate the wrong things. Let me help somebody right now. S we, listen, when y'all celebrate somebody on time, we're celebrating somebody because they got there. You know how you got that one friend who's always, and sometimes it may be me, so don't judge me. But every now and then we got somebody who's like ridiculous late, and they're like, you know, one day they show up on time. And you're like, man, we're going to have a party. You're on time today. You actually showed up when you were supposed to, and you made it on time. Good celebrating them. It ain't a miracle that they showed up on time. Come on, it's not, it's not just a flat-out miracle they got there when they were supposed to. But watch this. Can I help somebody else out today on a different spectrum? People who are consistent. Listen to me. Consistency is often never celebrated. It's never celebrated because we're used to people being a certain way. And it is, it is a lot of times that people are not complimented when they're consistently doing a good thing, when you're consistently doing a good job at work, or when you're consistently serving faithfully here at Compassion. You're always here. You're always doing your job. You're always doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're never late, and you, you just always do you know what is supposed to be on your list of things to do, and it is consistency. Can I congratulate you on that? You may never receive a lot of compliments, but consistency is one of the best things and attributes you could ever have because you're keeping progress. I mean, you know, life is all about trying to keep a consistent pace. You don't have to sprint this thing. You don't have to sprint to heaven. You need to make sure that you are consistent in the race. Keep your progress steady and stop focusing on goals that don't even really matter. Come on, hit your neighbor right now and say, stay, stay consistent. Stay consistent. Have you ever felt like, watch this, this, this has got to be somebody else but me. Have you ever felt like, like in your life that the closer that you feel like that you're getting to the goal, the further away that you feel like you are? Anybody ever felt like that? Like the closer, like, man, I'm almost there. I almost, you know, I'm almost accomplished what I set out to do in life. Woo, you know, I'm almost, I almost got that, you know, whatever that is, fill in the blank for your life. I'm almost there, though. And then all of a sudden, you really step back and evaluate, and you're a lot further away than you really thought. I really, you know, as I'm like in my weight loss journey, you know, I'm like, man, I lost 20 pounds. That's awesome. I'm almost there. And I'm still not almost there. It's been a long time. <laughs> it's because there's a lot of spinning tires along the way. Like you enrolled in school, you know, and, it, and you realize when you first started kindergarten, it takes 34 years to get a diploma. Amen. Come on. Like, seriously, it just like it takes an entire, maybe not 34, but it's at least 23. Amen. It just takes forever when you're going through school and you're just like, man, this is never going to end. I'm never going to get out of here. I'm never going to get to graduate. And then, and then you take step, you know, you take steps to get healthy. And then you're just like, you know, man, I got such a long way to go or, or my finances are finally doing better. And I'm finally getting a financial plan, but you still have a long way to go before your finances get balanced back out. And you realize, man, my debt really is huge after all. And then on a much larger scale though, God, I trusted you with my problem, but I didn't make progress, and now I'm stuck in the process, and I don't know why. We get in the process of life, and we get mad because there, there's no progress. Consider, though, when Jesus Christ had his mission on this earth. What did he do? He set out to do a great mission. He set out to save sinners. And when he went to the cross and shed his blood and went to the tomb, we know that three days later he rose from the dead. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And now he's seated at the right hand of God the Father. And he is, uh, you know, on our behalf, speaking to God on our behalf. And he is like the lawyer for us in this situation. We were guilty, but he stands in our place. That was his mission. But watch this. These men on this earth, the Roman Empire that had come to power, these very men that he made from his own dust, Killed him on a cross from wood that he made and formed with his, that he uh, formed the, his own tree, it was his own tree in creation all the way back in Genesis 1. And they did it on top of a hill that he formed with his own hands. Amen. These men that were with him that day, who were spitting on him and plucking his beard, the very ones that he had made the descendants from creation all the way from the beginning in Adam. But what you missed in, in all of this, in your problem, whenever you say that I'm stuck in this process, I'm not moving or going anywhere. What you missed in that situation is that, that you trusted God, amen, and you trusted God with that situation, and then it, it did not kill you after all. Amen. And so what we miss is 
God, I'm mad because things didn't go my way. But what you missed is that God blessed you in a different way and you didn't even see it. Come on, family. And, and then we stand here today and we can all be testaments of what God has done in our lives. We are here this morning at Compassion Church and everybody's got a testimony. God has done amazing things in our lives, all of us. And I know that because many of you have shared them with me. And so we stand here today and we know that God is with us in the process. How do we know he's with us? Because he made us get here this far. Amen. We have walked through all matters of hell. We have been through the darkest seasons of our life, but we are still here today. Amen. Delayed praise is okay. We'll accept it. Hallelujah. We're still standing here today. We're still in this place. Somebody said, but you have no idea what I've walked through. Can I tell you today that your scars, amen, from your past are not weakness, amen. They're not even failure. All of your scars just resemble victory. Come on, somebody. It did not kill you. All your scars did was leave a reminder that you overcame. And if you sit down and have a little talk with Jesus and ask God about all the scars that he has, he will show you his and he will show you that you are looking at victory in Christ Jesus the Son of God. Amen. Don't ask Jesus about scars and feel sorry for yourself because he overcame with his scars. Amen. Stop defining your process. Amen. Your success and, and your goals in life and all the things that you've got to do. Stop trying to approve all of those things by everyone else's standard. Amen. By everybody else's standard. Don't make any mistake about this. I look like I'm losing. Amen. I, I, I look like that I'm not doing well in life. And what I want to tell somebody who is doing that today is I loose you from that in Jesus' name. You need to stop allowing everybody else's scope to define who you are because Paul said this he said I want to gain Christ and know him in his resurrection he said all the other junk that I go through that is garbage that is rubbish will stand only a testimony and that testimony will scream to everybody who I'm around who comes in contact with me even all of my enemies and they will say look what the Lord has done amen God has rescued me once again he has saved me through some junk and I overcame through Christ Jesus Look what God has done again in my life. Amen. God has loosed you and done amazing things in your life regardless of what man says. And you need to stop measuring yourself on man's approval. Say amen, church. The closer Jesus got to the cross, the more, dis the more confused the disciples became. I don't understand. Why, why is he leaving us, though? I know what he's been preaching, but why would he go and leave us here by ourselves? Don't make any mistake, though. The disciples loved him. They trusted him. A couple of Sundays ago, we talked about Thomas. And the scripture said that he was, he was with Jesus all the way to death. He said, come, let us go with him that we may die with him. So don't make a mistake about that. They loved him and they trusted him. But they did not see what Jesus was doing as progress. Watch this. They saw it as defeat. What they thought Jesus was doing was going to be defeated. At the cross, instead, Jesus said, this is only the progress that needs to be made. Amen. This is the progress that will show its fruits through the generations to come. The closer you get to Jesus, the, the further it seems like that you are because your enemy, the devil, will always try harder and harder to make sure that you seem distant from God. When you don't see God moving, when you don't know that he's working on your behalf, so it feels like that you're not making any progress. It feels like you're not going anywhere just because you have not seen it. And speaking of this, on Palm Sunday when we're talking about Jesus and his sacrifice, amen, uh, him heading to the cross, what did the crowd shout to him? Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest. And they're saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they're giving him the praises and lifting up praises to him. But Luke said in verses 19 and 30, he said, uh, excuse me, 1939, he said, and some of the Pharisees, got to love the Pharisees. They're always going to be there. How many know the Pharisees are always around when God is moving? And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd and said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And in 40, he said, he answered and said to them this, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Amen. Because he who is um, there in their presence, amen, he who is created, amen, will always praise. He said, I can't keep them quiet. 
You don't understand. If they don't sing my praises, the rocks are going to. Amen. Because there is an expectation. There is always, whenever Jesus is around, when God is beginning to move, there is always an action that is there to take place because he is too worthy, family. God is too worthy. He is too holy for him not to be praised. And Jesus was saying, when my presence shows up in a situation, come on, y'all better hear me right now. When my glory goes somewhere into somebody's situation, into somebody's mess, into somebody's destruction, into somebody's defeat, and somebody's despair. When it gets there, things have to change, and there has to be a shift that takes place. You don't understand, Pharisees. If they don't praise me, then I'm going to find somebody or something who will. Why don't you holler at your neighbor right now and say, if I don't sit over here and shout and praise God, the chair will. Come on, somebody. Something is going to give God praise. That was a creation, and something's going to glorify by the name of Jesus, it might as well be somebody that has a breath that was borrowed from Almighty God in the first place. It might as well be me giving him praise. I don't have to be poked. I don't have to be prodded. I don't have to have somebody stand here and cheerlead and make me praise before I'll start praising. Amen. I don't have to get somebody to come up here and say, now lift up your hands. That's cute. Now, now go ahead and put your hands together and clap. Now you praise on the Lord. Somebody does not have to do that to me for me to give God praise. No, no. I was doing it this morning before I left the house. I was doing it in my car on the way here because God is too holy. He has too much glory and he's done way too much for me to be quiet about him now. Now. Hey, God is holy today and he's worthy of praise. I can't stop giving him praise just because I don't feel the progress. Amen. We go, go back and watch a couple weeks ago. It's more than a feeling. If you know, then you know. Amen. It's more than just worshiping God on feelings. I worship God on my faith. Amen. I will stand on Christ the solid rock no matter what I'm going through in my life. Amen. I am not going to be outpraised by no rock because there ain't no rock I know can sing amazing grace. Amen. That must mean that there is a tribe on the earth today who still choose to lift up and pray. Praise the name of Jesus, although hell is breaking loose in their life. God is holy, and he's worthy to be praised. Somebody better praise him right now. My God. What if I told you that God likes to mess up your plans sometimes? God likes to do something a little unexpected. And why wouldn't he? Because he's an unpredictable kind of God. If you could figure God out, he wouldn't be worth serving. Hello? Hello? If you could figure out everything he was going to do, it would not be worth the relationship. You know, uh, people say all the time we're talking about these goals and stuff. Let me jump back to them. Oh, when I get out of school and get my degree, whenever I start my career and I get married and I get my house with the white picket fence and my cute little Labrador retriever is running around, amen, all things are just going to be good. Everything's going to be, that's going to be, those are my goals and that is what is going to be great. And that's what we set up as ourselves. What we don't realize, though, is there's a process before we get there. Amen. And then all of a sudden, when we start looking at those goals, our plans get interrupted. Amen. School didn't work out. College didn't really go like we thought. Our career didn't really happen like we wanted it to. The relationship ended. Whether it was our fault or not, maybe it was even no fault of our own. The relationship ended. And my bank account's still in the red, and I'm still trying to figure out what went wrong. Plans getting interrupted. But can I tell you, when Jesus walked on the earth, the closer that he got to his purpose, the further away he got from their plan. Y'all missed it. It's okay. You can go back and watch it. The closer he got to his purpose, the further away he got from their plans. I mean, so why, why do we, you know, we think about this. Have your plans been interrupted lately? You might be getting closer. Amen. The closer we feel like that we're getting, we open our eyes really and we're still so far away. But God said, no, 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 I'm closer to my purpose, even though your plans have been interrupted. Even though you've been messed up in some things. It is our progress not progressing. It's our plans not really panning out. It's the process that we go through in life. I mean, I used to play a game all the time with some of my family. I don't even know what we would call it. But we would like point at objects and we would like, you know, try to, maybe it's just I spy. Maybe that was the game I'm thinking of. I don't know. It's been a long time. But we were like trying to look at something. And what we would do, though, in this particular game that I'm thinking of is whenever you would, you know, try to, you would try to guess what that was. Whenever you get close, you always have somebody, they're like, closer. 
closer. You're on fire. You remember that? Or they were like, nope, colder, colder. Way, oh, frozen now. You're way far away. You know, and like I think about that in those kind of games. And we're, we're trying to point this out. And what happens, though, in these scriptures is that Paul's conversion in Damascus. Don't miss this. God in heaven, don't miss this. If you don't hear anything else, don't miss this. Paul's conversion in Damascus, he was never closer to God than when he was blinded and knocked off on the road going to Damascus. He was never closer to God. Why is that? He had religion. He had climbed the ladder of religion. He'd been up there, man, in the top doing what he thought he should in the Roman Empire. But Paul said, I realize now that so far I have every, everywhere else that I still got to go. I am nowhere near where I'm supposed to be. I have nowhere near, even, not even close, arrived in that place. I have still so much more that I've got to do. There is still so much more that I've got to experience. Can I tell you today? Us too. I'll let your neighbor say that's us too. We have so much further to go. We have so many other things in life that we've got to do. We, we're, we're not even close enough to feeling like we've arrived in Jesus. I mean, we, we have not just arrived in God. I mean, I said it a week or two ago, whenever that was, that if I lived to be 150 years old, if God would, that would be weird. I'd look awfully strange, first of all. But if I did in the Lord Terry, I would still not arrive and know everything there was to know about God. Take men like Noah living 950 years, still not knowing everything there is to know about God. Amen. You'd have to be born in like the year 1040 or something ridiculous to know, uh, to, to be that old and still you wouldn't know it all. You would not have a clue. And watch this. God's presence creates awareness. Not like, not like we want all the time, but God, the presence of God creates an awareness. Because watch this. The closer you get to him, you begin to realize how little that you really know and how little that you really can do on your own and you realize that you need help how many can confess with me that we need the help of God we cannot do this on our own we cannot make it on our own amen the old song I love to quote all the time is that we can't even walk without him holding our hand I mean I can't do anything on my own I have to have him going with me God's presence creates that kind of awareness Isaiah said it like this in verses 6 and 5 he said I said woe is me for I am undone don't miss that word that he uses. He said, I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. It's all around us. It was in his world and so it is today. We dwell in the land of people who are unclean. But then he says this in his revelation with God. He said, my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Why is that? Why would he say this and feel th this kind of revelation in the presence of God? It's because running around on your own strength and running around in your own wisdom, running around with your own success and your own plans will always result in failure. Can the church say amen? People who only look, amen, and only see things like, the, you know, winning by the world standards, man, you know, oh, I'm doing so good. I got everything like everybody said. The Forbes magazine, I'm doing it right, you know. And we try to base our standards and our lives off of everything that they're saying out there looks good, amen. What we do then is when we look like we're, we're really winning on the outside, really inwardly, there are so many people who are losing. There are so many people who are not winning really at all. They go home and they feel a sense of hopelessness man they feel like there's a void there and they feel an emptiness and you may look at somebody and say they really have it all together they really look like the perfect family they really look like they've got everything that somebody should want and really they go home and they are broken and they have lost themselves inwardly come on somebody entering into the presence of Yahweh does not cause you to realize how perfect you are it causes you to realize what a mess you really are it causes you to be undone in the presence of God God. Amen. Because a holy God will reveal that to you. Are y'all hearing me today? When you find yourself, though, as a frequent flyer with the Holy Ghost, amen, when you're always there with Him in the presence of God, when you are pursuing Him, it may look like you're losing to everybody else. Think about it. When Jesus was hanging on a cross, they were laughing at Him. They said, this guy has lost everything. But really what He was doing was winning, baby. He said, all I do is win. And right now I'm hanging up on this cross, and y'all think you've done everything that you can. 
began to kill me, but really what's happening is progress is being made. I'm opening up something to generations and generations to come, and what I open, no man can shut. Amen. What God is doing is saying the progress that you think that you are lacking is really being made in Christ Jesus. Paul said, all I'm doing is winning in Jesus. He said, yeah, I know I've already been blinded. He said, I've been to prison. I've been beaten. I've been hunted. I've been hated and everything else. But he said, I have come to know Christ Jesus. And because I know Jesus, I count everything else that I have accomplished as garbage. And everything that I'm going through now, though it feels like hell on earth, all I'm doing is winning in Jesus because my faith is in an unshakable God. But we don't like that part. We don't like it. Pastor, I just want to have money, doggone it. I just want to be able to not have any bad days. I just want to be able to, can that just, is that too much to ask? I just want my life to really work out. Is that just too much? I don't want any attacks. I just want to come to church and mind my own business. Buckle up, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye. Come on, family, we got to wake up. We have to realize that life is hard and progress stalls. Sometimes your plans may fail. Everything that you thought you were going to work out years and years ago has fallen and now you're confused and you don't know where to go. Your heart is broken. But can I tell you, God is still good. Amen. His love never fails. His plans are always good for you when you trust him. And his heart is full of love for those that are his children. Amen. All of your scars are victory. So what can I tell you with all this good news except it may look like you're losing. Amen. If it looks like I'm losing in life, don't feel sorry for me because really I am winning by heaven's scoreboard. Amen. Hold your neighbor right now and say, all I do is win. Amen. Tell him, even though it looks like I'm walking through hell, all I'm doing is winning right now because my faith is in Jesus. Amen. I fight. I struggle. I get hurt and I deal with pain. But in my weakness, Jesus is my victory today. Give him praise if you believe that. Amen. I got to hurry. I got to get to the graveside. Here's what I want to tell you before we go. What do you do when progress isn't progressing? What do you do? Really, I'm asking you a question. Don't answer. You don't tell your neighbor. You may, they may run and put it on Facebook. But what do you do, though, really, when your progress in life, when you're not really moving forward like you want to, how do you handle that? What do you do? Do you handle it with love? With love. <laughs> with tough, I'll get it in a minute, tough leather skin, and you just say, my hide's got to be tough for what I'm going through in life? Or are you handling it in a straight jacket with lime jello? Losing it. Just feeling like you've gone crazy, man. You just, you've got to be locked up somewhere in a padded room because you cannot take anything else. How do you handle those moments? How do you handle no progress? How do you handle your wheels spinning? What happens to you when the relationship is over? What happens to you when the career did not work out? What happens to you when the doctor comes in and he sits down and he takes off his glasses, opens a folder and says it was cancer, but we're going to talk about treatments. What do you do? How do you handle all of those situations? What happens when we give everything that we have in life and it still does not go well and it throws cheap shots at you and it feels like you're spinning wheels? What do we do? Paul said, I press on through those things. I put forward even though it does not look good for me. Amen. I've got to press through people hating on me. i got to press through the dialysis. i got to press through the chemo and through the funerals that I'm dealing with, through the breakups, through the eviction notice, through them towing my car out of the driveway whenever I can't pay my bills. It's only a process and I still belong to Jesus. My name is still written in the Lamb's book of life and I have victory right down here in the messy middle. Come on somebody. I don't have to wait until my feet are on streets of gold for victory. I've got the victory down here and everything else is garbage except Jesus. Amen. I've got to press in so that I can press and push out because there is an out in this process that you're in, in Jesus' name. If you're in it, you're coming out of it in the name of Jesus. I just prophesied that over you. I didn't just say it to you. If you're in it, you are coming out in Jesus' name. Don't let your process stop all of your progress. You've got to keep pushing. You've got to keep going. Why, why am I not there? I thought I'd be there by now. What's happening in my life? Why are my plans falling apart? Why has this been disrupted? I mean, your plans might be getting messed up from God. Why would he do that? Why would God mess up my plans? Because they weren't his. And when it's not his, he will destroy your plans than watch you mess up your life because he loves you too much to watch you crash and burn. Have your plans been interrupted lately? You might want to praise God for it. 
you might want to rejoice if things haven't went your way because God might have just saved your life. The definition before we close. Pressing, when Paul said this, to push is this, a steadily push through or to exert force. It means to move by means of pressure. Ask the woman about the issue of blood if she knows anything about pressing through when progress isn't progressing. You're talking about a woman who dealt with an issue of blood for 12 years, went to the temple, paid what she was supposed to pay 12 years of her life and dealt with this issue and asked God why. Probably, I would imagine, I don't know, I'm not going to say it, but probably ask God why. Why still dealing with this even though I trust you she was in the process and there was no progress. I mean, she was there trying to press through in the temples and still not getting any help. And she knew one thing. It's easy to quit. But when everything else is going on that is difficult on your life, put the pressure on those things when they're putting pressure on you. Amen. She did not say that I can't get there. I can't make it. There's too many people in this crowd. Amen. All she said is I know that if I can press through and get to Jesus that he will make all things brand new. I've got to press through this and get in the presence of God. Amen. She didn't say I can't, uh, you know, it's too much. I can, I can just quit right now. This is ridiculous. God has never helped me. My life is over. She said, if I can just get to the presence of God, if I can make it to Jesus, I know everything is going to be okay. Everything else has failed me, but I'm not going to give up on the one who never gives up on me. I've got to press on and get to the presence of Jesus. Amen. Somebody with their mind made up that's pressing on to Jesus right now, give God some praise if you're going to press on. God, we praise you because we are going to press on. Amen. You need to tell him when you're going through the worst moments of your life, I'm going to praise you and press on no matter what it looks like. Amen. The definition said could even mean to squeeze the contents out of something. I wonder if anybody in here has ever been squeezed before. I wonder if you've ever had the pressure squeeze, put on you so much that you feel like that you didn't have anything left that you've been squeezed so hard. Sometimes the pressure, amen, that you, that's put on you is to squeeze out some faith that you haven't had in a while. Sometimes I, I, I worry too much and I don't put enough faith in and the Holy Ghost might give me a little squeeze to get some faith out. The pressure is on. Don't mistake your lack of progress and measuring that according, according to all those standards. Th don't mistake that as failure. It's not failure when you don't have the proper scale to even measure the progress. How are you, how are you describing your success and you don't have the scale to measure it with, in other words. God owns that scale, family, not you. I don't have it. It ain't the house in the closet with dust on it. I don't have that scale to measure success and the right progress for you. So here's what I want to tell you. Stop trying to weigh your life, your mistakes, your problems, and your struggles on a faulty scale that will give you false results. Quit. Stop it. But I'm single. I don't have any kids and I don't own my home and my business did struggle. It failed and I tried to put the money into that, you know, investment and I've lost a bunch of stuff and, and school never worked out though and everything just, I've just got problem after problem and I believe that the report would be all as well and it wasn't and I've just got struggles and everything else is going wrong in my life. You're looking at it on the wrong scale. It's the wrong one. I want to know Christ in his resurrection. That's what Paul said. People read that scripture, man, they're like, yeah! resurrection power Woo! they get excited over that we don't finish that though we don't finish that out because he said and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death wah, wah, wah. we don't like the second part of that sentence we don't like the fellowship of his sufferings and death pastor I just want the resurrection power I don't like that other part can we just leave that part out when we preach Listen, you don't have to die like he died to be the, the best Christian that you can be. You don't have to suffer a martyr's death or any of those things like Paul is talking about. Listen to me. Watch this. You only have to live like he died. Live like Jesus died. Let that sink in for a second. Paul said, I want to participate in his sufferings and in his death while I live. What does that mean? It means you're going to have to go through some junk. You're going to have to go through some seasons you don't like. You're going to have to be in that place sometimes. It means you constantly will go through moments of death and resurrection. 
Amen. Because you will die to the shallow desires, shallow desires of my heart so that I can get what is really best for me. Some things that I don't really need, I've got to die so that I can find what really matters. Everything else is rubbish. It's garbage. Whatever I have, whatever I've got to do, whatever I've got to believe in, whoever I've got to write off and get out of my life, whatever I've got to sacrifice, even though I like it, if it's not best for me, whatever's important to me, I'm giving it up for something that's more important. More specifically, someone who is more important. There are some times where I've got to lay down what's good and find what's best. I've got to put down some junk. It may affect me greatly in my life, my relationship with Jesus, though. But really, it's not that I'm losing. Even though it may look like it, I'm really winning. Your progress is not measured like you think it is, is what I want to tell you before I close. Trust in God in this process and know that if you will just press on, you are still making progress in Christ. Even when your plans fail, know that God is still in control. Musicians, we all come help me close today. We're going to pray in just a second. And um, as they come and we just begin to pray and seek God for just a moment, I just want to let you know if you are in some kind of a process right now, and I know we are all in a process, but if you are in one in particular process today, Please don't lose sight of the fact that you don't have the scale to measure your progress. So just because a plan in your life may fall through, though you trust in Jesus, God can still give you the progress that you need. You can still press on and make it through some stuff. Amen. I don't know about you, but in, in times in my life, even still, it doesn't matter that I'm a pastor. In fact, probably more so now that I'm a pastor, I have to press through some things. I have to press on. I have to keep going. My tires are spinning, Pastor. I haven't made any progress in such a long time. Press on. Keep going. But everything fell through my life, and I thought I had everything planned out. Get in the presence of God and press on. Keep going. Will you stand with me? As you're standing, we're going to pray in just a moment. You can just close your eyes, bow your head, and just focus on Jesus for just a second. I need you to understand that when you belong to Jesus, your faith has got to be planted in his victory. The Bible said, on Christ the solid rock I stand. And it means that all other ground is sinking sand. You have to stand on Jesus. That even includes the times that are not good. The times when you fail, especially I would say those times. Because... It is only on Him that you're standing on when you make it. When you don't feel like your life has panned out like you wanted it to, when you feel like you're just spinning your tires in the sands of life, I promise you, God is still up to something good. And He is still worthy of your praise, and you can still trust Him. I press on through those things. I press on through that bad relationship. I press on through the way they betrayed me. I press on. When I went through that addiction and, and, I'm, and it still calls my name, I keep pressing on and I've got victory in Jesus. I press on through stuff. So what I want to tell you today when nobody's looking, if, if you need God to give you strength in this process and you want to feel like in your life, you want to crush, first of all, crush, break, and throw the scale in the garbage that you've been trying to measure your life on, then I want you to do that today. Somebody needs to be released and freed of that today. You are measuring your success on things that Jesus never intended for you to measure your success with. You don't have the scale to try to say that you are successful or not successful. Your identity is in Christ Jesus, and I feel my help right now to tell somebody you need to throw the scale away and stop measuring your life and your success or your lack of success on anything except what Jesus intends. You might be making the best progress you've ever made because your plans fell through. You might be doing better than you ever have because those things didn't work out because God is in control and they weren't His plan. So I want to tell you today, if you want to seek God for any reason at all, if you want to say, God, I need to come in and just extend my faith. I need, I need to be strengthened in this time in my process. Or, or I'm going through these things and I want to come and pray so that I can press on. I'm dealing with those things right now. I'm going through one of those situations right now. And I need the strength to press on and to get through it. If you want to do that, if you want to believe God for healing, if you want to believe God for to, to fill you with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, whatever it is that you need in your life, you have a God in this place today who's 
here and who's able and wants to do it. And I want to pray with you. So if it's you while no one's looking, I just want you to slip up your hand first of all. Put it right back down. Just wave at me. Let me know what I can pray for today and be praying for this week. God bless you. Thank you for your hands. Anybody else, just say it's me. I need you to pray. I got to press on through some stuff. I, I know that I can make it, but, but I just got to keep going. And life has been unfair, but Jesus is so good. And my plans have failed, but God's have prevailed. Amen. He's still good and faithful. Amen. God bless you for your hands. Thank you for your faithfulness. And thank you for the, for the honesty, first of all. Now the question remains. Will you press on? How will you handle this in your life? Will you trust in Jesus? Or you feel like you've got to be locked up in a padded room because you're losing your mind? I promise you, if you will trust in the Lord, you will have the strength to make it no matter what this is. Press on. Press on. Press on. If you want to come and pray, I don't care if you raised your hand or if you didn't, I want to pray with you for whatever need you may have in your life today. And I want to grab a hold of your faith and bind it with mine and get a hold of heaven today for whatever that is. Amen. I'm going to start praying over everyone. And, and while I'm praying, even you can come. And I want you to come for whatever need you could possibly have. And let's get a hold of heaven today and pray and ask God to move. Come on right now, Father, in Jesus' name, as we're gearing our hearts up and ready for prayer, I believe, God, that the miracle is on the way for someone today in this house or watching today. God, I believe that for somebody, we've got to get a faith about us that will cause us to press on. Lord, we've got to get our motives adjusted today. God, we've got to throw some scales away that are trying to weigh our success in life. God, we've got to get ourselves refocused so that we can make it through these things, God, and on Christ Jesus, the solid rock, we will stand. Lord, I pray today for every person here, Lord, who raised their hand, a special blessing for them, God, and what they're dealing with. And I pray also, Lord, for those who you may be dealing with, even in their heart right now, in their heart of hearts, God, that you begin to touch them, strengthen them, and whisper the, the, the very encouraging words to them that they can make it through Christ Jesus. Lord, today, with all of our faith in you, God, praising your name, I just believe that you are a strong tower for those who are out in a storm today in their life. And all who will run into you will be safe. God, right now, begin to move and meet on every need in this place or who are watching and begin to bless and touch with unshakable faith. We put it in you today, God, and ask you to move right now in Jesus' name. Come on, if you need anything from God, you better meet me up here today and not walk out of this place without your blessing. Don't walk out of this house today needing something from God and don't get a touch today. Come on, where are you at? I'm going to wait on you. Where are you at today? If you need a touch of God, we want to pray. We want to believe God to move for you. It is only up to you if you want to pray and believe that. It's only up to you. Come on, if you're still at your seat, just worship Jesus. He's in the house and he's worthy to be praised. Come on, if you're not praying, just begin to worship God. you, God, that we can hear the chains falling. God, I give you I give you the highest praise and rejoice today that I believe in this place or whether someone's watching that we have busted up and thrown away some scales today that are trying to measure our success and progress, God, in giving us false results. Today, I lose somebody and set them free in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you that your love is so abounding, your grace is so abounding, God, that every day when we wake up, we can feel the love and the power of Jesus right wherever we are to say, this day, 
I will serve the Lord. This day, my progress will be found in Jesus. This day, my identity is in Jesus Christ. This day, I will serve the Lord. God, we're grateful that you are still the God in control of our lives, our nation, our world. Lord, you've spun it in motion, and you still have it in control. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I praise you that somebody is coming out. Somebody is pressing on today. Somebody will be loosed and experience freedom in Christ Jesus. God, I love you, and I'm grateful today for the progress that is found in Jesus. Comfort your people today, God. Bless us this week. In your name I pray. Amen. Can you put your hands together? I feel like giving God some praise before we go. Hallelujah. God bless you, family. I love you all. Um, I'm going to have to take off. i got to get to the funeral home to preach this graveside today. But continue praying for this family. And I'm praying for you. I hope you all have a wonderful week. I love you all. And I will see you Wednesday at 7 o'clock. God bless you.